Welcome to the Big World Introduction Tutorial where we're going to build a client only. Now firstly we want to get a tool called Debug View and we download this from the Microsoft website and this tool is quite useful as it allows us to pick up uh, messages from the Big World with uh, output debug string and debug print commands which you can use in any C++ program as well so this tool can be used for that. I'm just going to put it in a debug view folder underneath the big world installation and I'll just unzip that file there and you can see the program and we just run that and we ensure that the all the options are checked and you can watch it actually picking up Windows messages while we have it running there. Now with this you might sometimes need to run as administrator if you run into some problems but uh, generally it works for me with that. Now here the Python scripts are to create a new project and also one to adjust to each stage of the big world tutorial so this is quite useful. Now I'm going to make a copy of the template folder and rename this tutorial and then we'll be able to use those scripts. The one we're interested in is the one to generate the tutorial res folders at different stages to match the stage of the tutorial you're up to. Now you'll see here the res folder, the basic res folder. This is the complete res folder. Now that's when you finish the tutorial. I'm going to, in my DOS prompt, navigate through. Now you notice there I can use the tab key once I've got enough letters to get the directory name. Now I'm going to run Python and I'm going to use bw underscore generate res tree py. It takes in these keywords and the first one's client only for the client only part of the tutorial. You now see there it's generated a new res folder, one called res underscore client underscore only. This one has just the items required for a client only uh, big world. Now if we use WinMerge we can have a quick look between these two resource folders res and res client only and in that I'll just quickly go through these to show you the differences between the two and uh, we'll look more detail later in this video. So you can see here we've got uh, firstly the, if we order by the files that are different you can see there we've got the scripts config XML now this has things like the space we're going to, the actual positions, and later on you can see in yellow the, there are additional things that are done later. We've finally got there uh, the entities XML, so here we're only defining uh, the avatar on the left, and that's all that's required, and uh, later we do more, so there's client server entities and server only entities there. Uh, then the next one is the avatar py, so this is the Python script implementing the avatar and we can see handling key events and uh, in here we've got the bypersonality.py, so this is kind of the boot up script that initializes handles to the start events and, and exiting events and we'll see again on the left it's quite simple on the right at the end and you see at the bottom there it's many of the init offline that we're interested in because this is going to be just a client side only program. The avatar.def is a file that needs to match for every avatar.py and here we're defining different uh, properties of our avatar. So now if I just turn and show you the things that are different, you see write only, which is in the final version, there's a lot more resources incorporated into the project, so uh, that's where you end up. Now I'm just opening up the batch file that runs this, you see the res path is the thing we can define as either res or res client only or any other folder. Now this is set to nothing and then it asks the user for input, so we can, you know, at this point we might as well go ahead and create the res folders for the other stages of the tutorial. So I'll put in client server, and you see there it echoes the chapter of the tutorial it represents and we've got the chat console after that which is chapter 4. You see I use the up arrow to quickly bring the line up again and then I just replace the end part. Then we have uh, entity loader with chapter 5 and finally with chapter 6 
you'll see here we have a basic MPC okay so now that we've got that uh, you can see all the different res folders and we only just want to use one when we run it so I've just run the bat and I've put in basic underscore MPC now that's going to add a, that last version tutorial so here that's kind of the finished state and we're able to run around now uh, if we have a look under the res client only though going back to the first version you see here the entities XML and you see there yeah what we looked at with WinMerge you see we just got the avatar entry and this client server entities so this is uh, objects that appear both on the client server and server only entities which we have none at this point because it's on the client side program is empty Now if we look under entity def, you'll see that then we have uh, avatar.def to match that avatar entry. Now there's volatile entries, which these are data elements like the position and your for the player, so the direction the player is facing. They need to be synced frequently. The properties here, like the name of the player, is something that with this flag all clients, we want sent to all all the clients. Then we have things like non-volatile properties which we send less frequently so something like the player name is only updated uh, quite rarely so that would be an example. Now under the clients, uh, the client part of scripts you'll see here we've got the avatar.py so this is a Python script that uh, actually implements the uh, functionality behind the avatar object. Now part of big world structure is we have the big world uh, entity and the class avatar defined from it. You can see there the import big world we need for that and then you can see from that we also then by default need to say uh, player avatar which is a big world default we always need to do and we've got the on enter world which we define. Now we then call the parent class on interworld and then we can see here we've got things like the uh, player avatar filter and then we set up the physics from there we go on and we've got things like the key handling event which you can see the key import and we see things like whether the key is down and then we can use this to impact the actual motion of the player so whether they're moving forward or sideways or backwards or turning around okay so now from there we want to look at the personality script so normally one of these will appear in each of the folders whether this is a cell base or client uh, we've got the GUI elements big world objects and the key input you see here we've got the initialization and we actually initialize some parts of the GUI and uh, from there we've just got to start and finish which uh, we can initialize and, and close down when the game shuts down and then we've got changing environments, uh, chat messages and handling keys so all these are quite empty and uh, being a client only we've got the initial offline you can see here we've got the the space being created and we load the space that we've defined that we saw in the scripts config and we've got player ID and we've got the player type uh, the entity type and then under the player object start position and player start direction so this is these are part of the big world create entity parameters we need to create the player and from there we set the first person camera to true so obviously this first step won't be third person like we just saw okay so from here we're going back to scripts res client only and you'll see the scripts config we're going to edit that and you'll see here we've got this uh, main space that I just mentioned and uh, this one will change later to main two and we'll create an extra room we've got the avatar object that we just saw the a python script and def for def file and the start position there and start direction from that we go back and now i want to go to the big world editor so that's under big world tools 
world editor. Now here you see the pass XML. I'm just going to edit that. Now at the moment it's set on fantasy demo, so we want to change that to our new tutorial folder. But we also need to update the res folder to our client only folder. Okay, so we need to do this before we open up the big world editor. Now, once we've done that, we just run the big world editor. And once this is open, we want to create a new space. And with this, we are going to call it something different, but you can see there already it's under the folder we want, the res client only. Um, called spaces and then we're going to make it 5 by 5 to match the tutorial and then we're going to grab a texture out of the fantasy demo so you see here I got a fantasy demo demo uh, res then maps and landscape and then I'm just going to grab the a burnt ground TGA copy that go back to our tutorial folder and because I haven't got the folders, I'll go res client only. I'm going to create two new folders. I'm going to call this one maps. And this is just to match the layout. And this one called landscape. And I'm going to paste it under there. Okay, so jumping back in the world editor, I'm going to select that same folder. Now if I didn't do this it would, it would complain that I was selecting a texture that wasn't under a valid included res folder. Okay so once I've done that I've got my basic world. Um, now I'm just going to exit and it'll prompt me to save so I'll go yes and it's now saving it. Now from here I'm going to go and edit the scripts config XML again because at the moment it's using the main space but I'm going to change this to main 2 which is the one I just created and once that's done we can go and use the runbat again and here you'll see that uh, I'm going to put client underscore only and that'll trigger the version using the res folder we've just been modifying so here you can see I've got a first person view I can look around uh, I can move around and the world's quite basic and straightforward at this stage. So that's it for this one and uh, the next one will continue this and make it service side as well. Thanks.